Don't you come near me or my kids, damn it! Please, Mommy. No, Mommy. Yeah, well, they're my kids, too! I ought to bury you up to your neck in the woods and leave you there. You're drunk! Please, Daddy. No, Daddy. I heard you sobbing softly, Satin. Oh, it was just a stupid TV movie, Remo. Are you going out? Uh, yes, I've got some uh, some work to do at the uh, office. Oh, work, office. I was hoping we might, you know, clean out the fish tank. Check the battery in the smoke alarm. Box unwanted canned goods and distribute them to the poor. No, no, Remo. Make love. Make love. Oh, my silly, seemly satin. Don't you know that I'm making love to you in my mind this very minute, even as we speak? Hold me. Hold me. Oh, darling, I know I'm silly to be jealous, but sometimes I'm afraid that when you're making love to me in your mind, you're making love to someone else in a place with a bed. Oh, Satin, don't you hear how silly that sounds? Oh, goodness, all the blood is rushing to my head. Put me down, darling. Hold me, put me down, hold me, put me down. Sometimes you make me feel so cheap, Satin. I'm not some sleazy boy toy. I'm your husband. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Please, just, just tell me I'm the only woman in your life. Just look me in the eyes and tell me, and then I'll know it's true. All right, Satin, you are You're the looking only... in your shoulder, Remo. All right, Satin, You're you are... You're looking in the lamp, Remo. Can't you just look me straight in the eyes, darling? Oh, all right, stop. I'm upset. I'm upset. I really, I'm too upset to go to work. I am going to the disco. The disco. What have I driven him to? <sighs> Hello. Satin Chow? Yes, this is Satin Chow. Who is this? I know where you live. Who is this? Who is this? I know what you're wearing. How do you? Where did you? Why are you? I know everything there is to know about you. Who, dear God, is this? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Sam. Hi, honey, it's Varda. Everything okay? Oh, oh, hi, Varda. Oh, no, sorry. I thought you were someone else. Well, aren't we all someone else's from time to time, Satin? Oh, Varda, you are so wise. I'm so happy you're my mentor. I know. Look, is everything okay? You sound like you've been crying. Uh, no, no, everything is fine. I guess I'm just worried about tomorrow. Well, I guess so. It isn't every day a girl gets to premiere her very first fragrance. I mean, just think, Satin. Everyone will know the sweet smell of puppy perfume. And everyone will know the name Chow. <laughs> 
Satin, are you still there? Satin. I'm sorry, Varda, I wasn't listening. Something else is really bothering you, isn't it? I know what it is. It's that bastard, Remo. Now, Varda, I won't let you talk about Remo that way. I mean, he is my husband, and I, I do love him, even though he is too old for me, and I'm afraid he's been unfaithful. And... He won't tell me what he does for a living, and he hasn't made love to me in months. <laughs> Well, as long as you're sure everything's all right. Okay, sweetheart, I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Why don't you just cry yourself to sleep? Oh, that's a good idea, Varda. Love you, honey. Good night. Good night. Oh, I'm sure it's nothing. Well, another topless dancer may have been the victim of foul play. And here's our Orlando Chang Stein with this story. Orlando Chang Stein. I'm Orlando Chang Stein on the scene at the popular night spot Tata's North, where another topless dancer was reported missing after a shift last night. Police believe she may have been the latest victim of the topless dancer serial strangler. Now back to you, Bruno and Kitten. Tough times for topless dancers, Kitten. Terrible tough times, Bruno. And now we go live to our Mindy McCloskey Sanchez, who is live with a story from Beverly Hills adjacent. Mindy. Tragedy struck this morning in Beverly Hills adjacent, where a little girl appears to have fallen into this large city-owned recycling bin you see behind me. At this time, details are sketchy as to exactly what happened, but emergency personnel are on the scene to extricate the small child from the large bin. We'll be back with updates as the situation changes. For It's Morning LA, I'm Mindy McCloskey-Sanchez. Now back to you, Kitten and Bruno. The poor little girl. Ouch. Marcy Millman, the actress. No, no. Oh, no, 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 no. She lives in that big white house across the street. Are you a, a gardener? No. Life salesman? No. Exterminator? Yes. <laughs> I mean, no. I'm an unemployed factory worker. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wait. No, it's okay. It's giving me time to think about things. Over and over and over. Sometimes we forget to take the time to think. If I still had a job, I wouldn't be getting married today. Joblessness oh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is such a terrible thing. Wonder if telling that man where Marcy Melman lived was a great big mistake. Oh well.
that girl is on her way. Hi. Oh, can I, can I? Thank you very much. As the minutes tick by and a small child's life hangs in the balance, all eyes are on this recycling bin. The recycling bin that little four-year-old Nivia Johnson has called home for the last nine hours. Standing with me are the girl's parents, Ryan and Kim Johnson. Obviously, a very tense time, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, but can you tell us how Nivia got into the recycling bin? She must have gotten up in the middle of the night. She loved to recycle, Nivia did. She used to say recycle so cute, like... Oh, mommy, can I retycle this? And, mommy, can I retycle that? Somebody please get my baby out of that bin. A mother's heartfelt plea, a father's grief, a recycling bin. All the elements of a classic Greek tragedy. But let's hope that this story doesn't end as tragically as some of those tragedies did. We'll be back with more from the scene as it happens. I'm Mindy McCluskey Sanchez. Now back to you, Kitten and Bruno. Is there anything I can do to help? Anything you can do? Yeah, why don't you get my baby out of that recycling bin? Why don't you do that for me? I'm sorry, she's upset. I understand. Here's a perfume sample for her. That'll make her feel better. Hi, you're welcome. Hello. Good morning, Satan. You just missed a call. It's Satin, Carol. I know where you live. I know what you're wearing. I know everything there is to know about you. Did he leave a name? No, but don't worry, Miss Chow. I'm sure he'll call back. Uh, could I ask your advice about something, Miss Chow? Oh, I'd like that, Carol. I was thinking of changing my name to Cinnamon and becoming a centerfold model. You remind me of me when I was your age. Of course, I would never wear so much eye makeup, and I had a little too much going for me to consider posing nude. We you have Satin Chow stop on my office ASAP, Carol? Thanks. I'd better go. We'll talk again later. <laughs> this was fun. <laughs> Bitch. Miss Chow is here to see you, Mother. Oh, Neil, how many times do I have to tell you, please, call me Satin? You wouldn't be polite to call a fine lady like yourself by your first name. I mean, it's not like you're a topless dancer or something. I guess not. Neil, <laughs> 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 would you have the car fat around right now, please? Sat and I are going to be leaving very soon for the hotel ballroom. Yes, Mother. Neil <laughs> <laughs> is so unassuming and soft-spoken, Varda. You must be so proud. Oh, thank you, Satin. But I really can't take the courtesy. I'm just a stepmother. Neil really takes after his father, my fifth ex-husband. Oh, I didn't realize. You never mentioned your fifth ex-husband. Because I don't like to talk about him. I understand. He was a good man. You know, he was handsome, unassuming, soft-spoken, like Neil. But... Let's just leave it at that. Of course. Don't say another word, Varda. He couldn't stand the pressure of being called Mr. Varda Gray. You know, he just went berserk and he... Please don't make me go on, Satin. All right. He joined a cult of skinheads and he sold some military secrets to Pakistan. Oops. Shortly thereafter, Neil's father committed suicide in an amusement park in North Carolina. And then, of course, there was my sixth ex-husband. Promise me you won't make me go into it, Satin. I promise. He was a polygamist. I know what you mean. He had other wives. Really? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Crack. Crack, have you met my number one employee, Satin Chow? Satin, this is my new driver, Crack. 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 What an unusual name. I'm an unusual guy. I can see that. I hope you're not offended by my name at a time when so many, many lives are being destroyed by that deadly and insidious drug. I sometimes feel my name is a little untimely and inappropriate. You smell nice, Sally. It's puppy. You smell nice, puppy. 
No, I... Crack! Let's get cracking! <sighs> I like crack. Well, now, you know, Satin, admitting that you have a problem is a first step to recovery. Oh, no, 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 I mean the chauffeur. Oh, <laughs> crack, it cracks a good boy. I uh, <clears throat> adopted him when he was just 15. Oh, I didn't realize you had other children. Oh, yes, I have six stepchildren and 14 adopted children. But they're all very deeply, deeply troubled. You know, I really don't like discussing them at all. Oh, I understand, say no more. Actually, Beverly's the eldest. She has to live inside a plastic bubble or she'll explode. <laughs> and now, Ms. Vardigret. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Today, we're very proud to introduce a new line for Vardigray. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna let you see for yourself. I smell puppy. Come here, puppy. Come on. That's it, you little vixen, come here. Yes. <laughs> Come on. That's it. Come here, girl. You can sleep with me tonight. No man has smelled a puppy and been unable to love it. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited right now because this is what I want you to do. I want you to get your questions ready for the lady responsible for puppy, Miss Satin Chow. Good afternoon. I'll be happy to answer all of your questions, and then immediately following that, I'll take the ceremonial first whiff of puppy, which should be a nice photo opportunity for everyone. Was puppy tested on animals? Only for the accuracy of the scent. We're very proud to say that all of our laboratory testing is done only on fruits and vegetables. Is that safe and efficacious? Safe? Yes. Efficacious? I'm sorry, I don't know that word. And now, if there are no more questions, the ceremonial first whiff, Miss Gray. Oh, oh my God, Satin, you're bleeding. Oh dear God, I can't smell anything. Oh dear God, unless I'm terribly mistaken, something is terribly, terribly wrong. I just can't stand it. I'm gonna get us some answers from somebody right here, right now, Crack. Excuse me, but how much longer? How much longer? Don't you people give a damn about human life anymore? I'm sorry. Are you waiting to see someone? Of course I'm waiting. I've been waiting to see Satin Chow and her physician. Right down the hall, first door in the right room, 222. Dr. Mayer is in there right now. You can go on in. Hello. Doctor? Doctor Myer? What's wrong with it? No, no, no. Aren't you Doctor Myer? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, how can I help you? Well, we were wondering about Miss Chow, if, if she's going to be all right and when we could see her. Are you her parents? No, of course not. They're on their way. No, I'm her employer and her mentor, Varda Gray, and this is my adopted son, Crack. That's an unusual name. I'm an unusual guy. Yes, I, I can see that. Dr. Mayer, may we see Miss Chow now? Oh, yes, Chow now. Yes, uh, is, 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 is she all right? Yes, yes, uh, the, the bleeding stopped. Uh, come in, she's just finishing up some tests. Woo. Woo. I'll take that, nurse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hmm, just as I thought. What's wrong, Doctor? 
Well, you did okay on the math and verbal, but... But what, Doctor? Well, I... Well, I... Will my vision be permanently impaired? No, I... No, I... Oh, dear God. It's worse than I thought. I'm going blind. I'm going blind. Oh, shut up! Sorry. Um, I'd like you to do one more test. Uh, would you cover your eyes with your hands for me? Oh, boy, that was an easy test. No, that, that wasn't the test. I want you to keep your hands over your eyes. Oh. Nurse. Oh. Okay. Do you smell anything? Nothing, doctor. You can open your eyes. Oh, you're right. I can't open my eyes. Oh, thank you, doctor. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Satan. It's sad, doctor. Hmm. Oh, yes. What's wrong? I can take it. Well, I'm afraid uh, you've lost your sense of smell. <laughs> you have a rare but insidious disorder of the olfactory nerves known as anosmia. <gasps> your olfactory nerves are damaged beyond repair. You may never smell again. <laughs> That's my brave little soldier. Doctor, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure, Doctor? Well, of course I'm sure. Do you think I'd make something like that up? Hmm. Sorry. All right, is there anything, anything that can be done? Well, we could perform an olfactory nerve transplant. The odds for success are one in a million, of course. Of course. Of course. And the donor would have to be a blood relation. Any brothers or sisters? No, I'm an only child. Well, then our only chance is to use one of your parents as a donor. With older donors, it lowers your odds to one in a billion, of course. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. Doctor. What happens to me if the transplant isn't successful? Uh, first, you lose your sense of taste. Then hallucinations of smell will begin. Doctor, you don't understand. My sense of smell is my bread and butter. Your sense of smell is your bread and butter. You're right, I don't understand. Now listen to me. Heed my warning and heed it well. This doesn't sound good. If the transplant isn't performed within the next 72 hours, it will be too late. I brought your parents, Miss Chow. Oh, my poor baby. Mommy, Daddy, I have a nose, Mia. I need your olfactory nerves. Oh, please say I can have them. Please say you'll give them to me. Of course we will, sweetheart. Anything for our little girl. Oh. These are your parents? Oh, yes. Oh, doctor, I'm sorry. Mommy, Daddy, this is my doctor. Uh, but they're Asian. What do you mean? I mean, there's two Asian people standing over there who couldn't possibly be your birth parents. What do you mean? I mean, we need your natural birth parents, blood relations. But these are my natural birth parents. Mommy, Daddy, tell them. Oh, well... We didn't want to tell you. It didn't seem important. Tell me what? I was switched at birth, wasn't I? Switched at birth, yeah, right, as if that ever happens. <laughs> we wanted you more than a real baby, so we... So you what? We adopted you. Is this some kind of joke? I'm not adopted. Didn't you ever notice your parents were of a different race? No, I... I... Oh, dear God! Oh! She's gone into a self-induced catatonic coma. She's gone dead inside. She'll rest quietly now. Oh, oh my God. God. Doctor, my ear. I know, but just let me finish up here first, and then I'll look at it, okay? What's gonna happen to our little girl, Doctor? Well, if we don't find a blood relative, she will never smell again. Until she dies, of course, and then... Ooh. It can get pretty bad. But, Doctor, there are blood relatives. She was one of three girls. I have a picture here. I was going to show it to Saturn when she was a little older. What, like 40? I'm sorry. If we can find that woman or one of the missing triplets, there is hope. Without that, well... Well, what, Doctor? There is no hope. We've got to make her want to wake up. Come on, everybody, let's shake her! Uh. 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 Well, 
Didn't work, doctor. Well, it was your idea. Hmm. Now, look, there's an ex-nun that does volunteer work here in the hospital. Her tough love techniques have worked remarkably with a lot of our catatonics. Get me sister love. <clears throat> her name is Satin Chow, sister love. Here's a chart. Hmm. Let's see what we got here. Bloody nose, no sense of smell, adopted by Asians, one of triplets, dead inside. Yep. You just better wait outside, doctor. Leave little Miss Pretty Bit with Sister Love. You listen to me, Pretty Bit. You are coming out of that coma. Now you can do it the easy way or the hard way. Come on out of that coma, girlfriend. Come on now. Get that head up. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. You can do it. Come on out of that coma now, all right? Sister Love can tell you need some of my special love. Oh, yes. <laughs> Come on now. Come on out of that coma. Come on now. Let me hear you. Let me hear yourself. Ah! Feeling better, Satin. Oh, oh, it's all coming back to me now. I've lost my sense of smell. And and my parents aren't really my parents. Ah! Don't you go back into that coma, girlfriend. Sister Love is right, Satin. She might be a sadistic volunteer madwoman, but that doesn't matter. You've got to fight back. But how can I? Your mother has a photograph. She's not my mother. Oh, well, this Asian lady you've lived with your whole life has a photograph. Yes, of your real mother and your sisters. I have a sister? Yes, you're a fraternal triplet. A fraternal triplet? Fraternal triplet? Yeah, well, so are you. No, 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 no. She means you have two sisters. Look. Oh, I am. I'm a triplet. And... Gee, Mommy looks a little bit like Crystal Gale. When do I get to meet them? We don't know how to find them, honey. We never knew anything about them. I hope you don't resent your mother and me. I don't resent you. I hate you. Go away and stay away. <laughs> no, no, no. She doesn't mean that. She's just tired and sad. You, she doesn't mean that. You know, I think you should go home now. I'll have my chauffeur take you. Crack? No, thank you. I never use this stuff. I'd love a mood out of it if you have any. No, no I'm crack. Oh. That's a very unusual thing. I'm an unusual guy. Doctor, if I could find my real family, could you perform the transplant? Assuming that their olfactory nerves were in working order and they were willing. Well, I'm going to find them. I have a mother and two sisters out there somewhere. And I don't care what else happens. I'm going to find them. And I'm going to have that transplant. And I will smell again. You hear me, world? I'm going to smell again. It just doesn't make sense, Sat, and you're just running off without a clue. I've got a clue. This picture. All right, running off with one clue. It just doesn't make sense. Well, what am I supposed to do? Give up my career? I won't let a nose me or ruin my life. I can't. Ooh, I smell veal. Oh, my God. The hallucinations of smell the doctor told us about. Oh, don't you see, Varda? That's why I've got to go. What kind of life is it for a person running around smelling veal that isn't even there? I don't have an answer for that. But you're not going alone. You're going to take the Varda Graymobile and Neil. And, of course, you're going to need crack. Don't you think driving around with all that stuff in the car could create big problems? No. Crack, my adopted son, to drive you. That is, is that you? Oh, dear God, it's Remo. That bastard. Oh, how am I going to tell him about my anosmia? It'll kill him. Seth, why aren't you at work? Remo, I might as well go ahead and tell you. I've lost my sense of smell. I'm off on a foolhardy search for my birth mother and sisters. 
make love to me. Now, Remo? Here? If not now, when? If not here, where? You're confusing me. Where? Here. When? Now. We may never see each other again. You may die because of this god-awful disease you picked up. You might get killed. You might get kidnapped. You might get tortured. If you're trying to make me hot, it's working. <laughs> all over the country have been arriving here on the scene of the baby in the bin. It seems America has fallen in love with little baby Nivea, and they want to help. This is the officer in charge of the rescue operation. This is Sergeant Shriver. Uh, I'm not related to the Kennedys. Neither am I. Sergeant, can you give us an update on Nivea's condition, and can we expect her to be extricated soon? Well, there are a lot of bottles and containers in that bin. Oh. We don't want her to be bruised, so we're moving very mm -hmm. carefully. It is really, really serious here at the site of the baby in the bin. This is Mindy McCloskey-Sanchez. Now back to you, Kitten and Bruno. A sad, sad situation. It sure is, Bruno. On the lighter side of the news, a dog of a new perfume was unveiled this morning. Stock plummeted in Varda Gray Cosmetics as its premier fragrance called Puppy caused bleeding and the immediate loss of the sense of smell in its creator, Satin Chow. Bow wow. <laughs> I'm so sorry that. Where did that come from? <laughs> Got a dog in my tummy here. <laughs> I can hardly taste the cigar. Damn, this anosmia. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? My company is a damn laughing stock. Oh, Varda, you've been so good to me. I'll find a way to make it up. You had your clothes on the whole time? I guess this is goodbye for a while, Remo. Unless you'd like to come. Uh, no, thanks. I've got some work to do at the, at the office. I understand, my darling. This is my journey. One I must make on my own. Or with a couple of other people at the most. Oh, I smell pimento. Oh, dear God, I smell pimento! Oh, Satin. Oh, Satin, be careful, you know? And, and good luck. Are you coming, Varda? Of course I can. I've got a company to run, Satin. I just can't pick up and run off some wild goose chase with every employee who loses one of their senses now, can I? No, I guess not. No. Won't you at least let us drive you back to the office? Oh, no, of course not. You've got much too much to do. I'll just, I'll, I'll hitchhike. Is that safe? Of course. She'll be all right. It's not like she's a topless dancer or something. <laughs> Let's go, Crack. We've got searching to do. We'll start at the beginning, right here on my block. Stop the car! Maybe Marcy Millman knows where they are. I've got a really good feeling about this. Hi, Marcy. Do you know where my mommy Stay is? Down. Close the door. Okay, thanks. Bye. Get in. No luck, damn it. I guess we'll just have to keep looking. But where can they be? Maybe we're going the wrong way. Turn the car around. Oh, Neil. Hold me. No. Excuse me, old lady. Pretty hat. Have you seen my mommy? Thanks anyway. Oh, it's hopeless. Hold me, Neil. I said no. Stop the car! Have you seen my mommy? No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Oh, no, what crack? I can't take it, Neil. Hold me. N O. It's because I'm adopted, isn't it? Have you seen my mommy? No. Are you sure? No. Look again. No. Oh, I'm feeling physically drained. Maybe you should rest. Excuse me, have you seen my mommy? No. Uh -uh. Oh, 
Here's my Eddy. Feeling emotionally drained. Maybe you should rest. Excuse me, have you seen my mommy? Stop it! Stop at the next pink motel you see. This has been the longest 45 minutes of my life. <sighs> oh, miss, excuse me, have you seen any of these three babies? No. Oh, it's no use. I'm never going to find them. Why don't you eat something, honey? No, I can't. It's just one of the cruel side effects of this little known but insidious disease of mine. I've lost my sense of taste. Well, if you can't taste nothing, you're gonna love our coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you're tired, Miss Chow. We should all get some rest. You're right, Neil. Mmm, I smell mink. Oh, dear God, I smell mink. Oh, this is no good. I don't know what I'm doing. Whatever made me think I could find my real family? <sighs> You know, I don't usually like to help needy strangers with little bits of unsolicited information and advice. That might be the key to their future happiness. Yes, go on. See that fellow over there? He used to be the world's greatest detective. Used to be? Yeah, fell on hard times. He's got a dysfunctional, addictive, self-destructive, codependent personality. Got thrown off the force for conduct on becoming an officer. I guess he used his badge to put his hand where it didn't belong. In the cookie jar. No. In the brownie mix. No. In the pancake batter. Yeah, that's it. Look, why don't you talk to him? Maybe he could help you. Well, it's worth a try. Uh, more coffee, Mr. Kaprawalski? I'll get us some rooms. Kaprawalski, my card. Nice to meet you, Satan. I've been expecting you. It's Satin. I need your help. Lady, I can't help nobody. I can't even help myself. I'm out of control. You see this piece of pie? It's my 11th piece of pie, and I'm not done yet. I'm going to eat until I puke, and then I'll probably fall asleep my own vomit. I need an olfactory nerve transplant. I must find my mother and my sisters. Here's a photo. I'll pay you. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? I'm out of control. Don't you understand? I'm useless. Well. Mm, I smell glass. Oh, dear. God, I smell glass. Oh. 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 Okay, 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 I'm gonna help you, I'll help you. You've touched something very deep in me. God knows what. Let me have the picture. Oh, thank you, Kaprowatsky, thank you. This is gonna take time. It's a little bit difficult. Listen, if I don't come back, don't take it personally, okay? Miss <sighs> Chow, do you want me to carry you back to your room? What crack? Or do you want me to lay you back down on the floor? Oh. oh, crack, what are you doing? Well, you don't expect me to sleep in my uniform, do you? I want you to sleep in your own room, crack. Oh, okay. Come in. I have some good news, and I have some bad news. The good news is, I found your sister. Oh, dear God, Gabrilowski. So soon, but how? You might say I have a gift. A gift? For me? No, for detective work. Oh. 
But you said something about bad news? Yeah, I got some. You can tell me, Corporal Watskis. I can take it. Your sister's on death row. I can't take it. Ah! We better get going. You're right, maybe tomorrow is better. Nasal spray, jackpot. You know what you have to do, Neil. Do? Do? Yeah, do, do. What do you mean? I mean, strangle a topless dancer. If you know you want to. I do not! Why would I want to strangle a topless dancer? Maybe because your real mother abandoned you to become a topless dancer. Oh, yeah. Maybe because your stepmother, Varda, showed up to your junior high school graduation topless. Oh, yeah. I almost forgotten that. Maybe it has to do with all that ribbing you took in military academy because of your mushy memories. Oh, yeah. What was that cruel nickname they used to call me? Breast Boy. Oh, yeah. I'm unassuming and soft-spoken. I wouldn't hurt you. I mean, it's not like you're a topless dancer or something. I'm only doing this part-time. Told my husband through bartending in college. Pretty please. Pretty please. Pretty please with nothing on top. <laughs> Cho, who is this? I know where you live. Who is this? Who is this? I know what you're wearing. How do you... Where did you... Why are you... I know everything there is to know about you. Oh, my God, is this... Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Look, you're doing this to me, too. I'm not the one who wanted to sleep in separate rooms. Oh, crack. That sounds good. Looks like someone woke up on the addictive, self-destructive, dysfunctional side of the bed this morning. Crack, get over here right away. Kapopolsky's on a bender. Oh, you've got to pull yourself together here. Last night, before I screamed myself to sleep, you said something about finding one of my sisters in prison. Oh, yeah. Did you ever hear of the Reader's Daily Killer? Wasn't that the girl who used to read to her victims and then send in the stories of the killings to the Reader's Daily? Yeah, Fifty bucks a pop. Anyway, that was your sister. My sister? Mm. A murderess. It's sad. Oh, it's true. Get the car. We're going to the state prison. And take Capra Whiskey with you. Oh, I don't believe you two have officially met. Crack, Capra Lister, Capra Lissy, Crack. It's a very unusual name. I'm an unusual guy. Yeah, I could see that. What are you looking at me like that for? Not like I strangled a topless dancer or something. <laughs> so go on, Cappuccino. Tell me, how did you find my sister so quickly? Well, I, I kind of had a hunch. I said, since you're named after a fabric, I figured maybe she is too. So I made some calls to some former colleagues of mine. I may be a disgraced ex-cop, my badge tarnished by my human frailty, but I still got friends on the force. Friends that would what do you never... you named after a fabric? Well, your name is Satin. Yes? Well, satin is a fabric. Oh, I knew. 
never thought of that. Go on, Cannelloni. Well, in any event, the computer came up with velour net. So I took a sample of blood from this tissue from your pocketbook, I ran it up against hers, and, well, mm. bingo! Mm. You're a genius. How can I ever thank you? Well, w would you mind if we stopped at a store? I'd like to pick up some malt liquor and pornography. Sex. She's hard and cold. Visitor Valor! Yeah? Well, I don't want any visitors. I don't like nobody, and nobody likes me, and that's the way I like it. Open two! You're so hard and cold. Yeah, so what? So I'm your sister, that's what. Ha! I don't have a sister. I've spent my whole life in foster homes. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. Look, here's a photo of Mom and me and you and that other sister. Hey, Mom looks like Crystal Gale. So what if you are my sister? What do you want with me? Oh, I want to be your sister. I want to get to know you. I. I want you to undergo an olfactory nerve transplant so I can smell again. I should have figured as much. You're just like everybody else in this crummy world. Selfish. If you ask me, sister, you smell right now. You smell plenty. Oh, thank you, Valor. You could have left me out there to fend for myself. Maybe you're not as cold and hard as you pretend. Yeah, and maybe I'll bite you like a raccoon. Rawr. So, anyway, you're the Reader's Daily Killer, huh? I'm in the perfume business. Rawr. Well, all right. Uh, you're my sister, and that's that. Say... As long as we're in the library, maybe I could read up on my disease. You must know this place inside out. Where's the medical section? I don't know. Do you think this book might have some medical information? Yeah, that looks good. Gee, I left my glasses at home. Fuller, could you read this to me? No. You can't read. You can't, can you? You tell anybody about this and I will kill you. But if you're illiterate, you couldn't possibly be the Reader's Daily Killer. Why didn't you tell somebody about this at your trial? Maybe I thought they'd make fun of me. Oh, so instead you just let them put you on death row. I'm so ashamed. I can't read. I can't read. You're not hard and cold. You're plush and cozy. Just like your name. What do you mean? Well, you know, the fabric. What do you mean? Well, your name is Valour, and Valour is a fabric that's plush and cozy. Hey, yeah, I never thought about that. 
We're going to go to court tomorrow and get you out of here. Fat chance without a lawyer. I'll be your lawyer. I'll study these law books all night if I have to. But I'll get you out of here. I don't know how. But I'll get you out of this place. Even if it means that I have to read lots and lots of books till my eyes get all squinty. And I don't care if I ever see another book again as long as I live. I'll do it. Because you are my sister. And I swear, with God as my judge, and you and all these library books as my witnesses, I will get my sister out of this godforsaken place. <sighs> Things took a disastrous turn here at the scene of the terrible tragedy of America's little baby in the bin. Mrs. Kim Johnson, mother of little Nivea, became so desperate to save her baby that she... Well, if we can show that footage. And so, as little Nivea holds on to life, her mother heads for the netherworld. She died in that bin. Her limp, lifeless, cold, clammy torso, dragged out just moments ago, a tribute to a mother's love. A mother trying to save her child. Wouldn't we all do the same? But would we have been so reckless as to have actually jumped into that bin? A lot of questions, not many answers here tonight. Bruno, kitten. Hmm, a lot of questions. Yes, and uh, not many answers. Also in the news, the topless dancer serial strangler strikes again, this time outside the popular Tata's East. Police have come up with a composite sketch of the suspect. The public is being asked to help the police in the search for this suspect, so please, if you recognize this man... Hey, Neil. Call the Beverly Hills adjacent tip you could be that guy's brother. Five, five, tips. That's, five, 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 That's it. I've anonymous... had it with your wild insinuations. Okay, I'm going for a long, dark, quiet walk for an area of thick underbrush. Hey, Neil, I didn't mean anything by it. You're a sensitive little guy. There is a resemblance. Party's over, ladies. You can get back to your cells. We'd like to see the judge immediately. Oh, you would, would you? And what about? I can't read. I can't read! Well, why didn't you say so? Come this way. Your Honor, a grave miscarriage of justice has been miscarried. Are you an attorney, uh, Satan? It's Satin, Your Honor. Uh, and yes, I am an attorney. Self-taught. <laughs> Why me? Your Honor, you sentenced my sister, Valor, to death for a crime she didn't commit. She is not the reader's daily killer. She cannot even read. Oh, is that true, Miss Gnack? Yeah, Your Honor. I can't read. I can't read! All right. The prisoner is freed. All charges dropped. Case dismissed. Oh, I smell damp carpet. Oh, dear God, I smell damp carpet! Ah! Mm, gosh, I had no idea being an attorney would take so much out of me. Look. If you want me to do that transplant thing... Yes? You can forget it. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm hard and cold. I don't like nobody, and nobody likes me. If the transplant is not performed within the next 72 hours, it'll be too late. But I... 
You can call me a butt eye all you want. My answer is no. You're not getting nothing out of my nose. Excuse me. What would you sisters say if I told you I have located your other sister? I'd say you're wonderful, Caprolucci. Where is she? Not far from here. On the wrong side of the tracks. Oh, Valor. Oh, come with me to find our other sister. Oh, we could be a real family again. Come with me to find our other sister. Sure. I got nowhere else to go. Right up ahead there, crack. The shack with the satellite dish. Oh, what a cute little fixer-upper. Are you sure this is the place, Kaprashansky? Yeah, this is it. Hey, listen, do me a favor. Uh, would you ask if she has a couple of over-the-counter sleep aids she could spare? Okay. Hey, Copper, what's our sister's name anyway? Corduroy. Corduroy Rich. I think I'll just go for a long, dark, quiet walk through an area of thick underbrush. That's fine, Neil. Have a good time. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Like what? Strangle a topless dancer? <laughs> back here uh, at the limo in, in the morning, okay? Uh, I saw a casino uh, uh, around the bend over there. Just be careful not to gamble. Are you corduroy? Don't you kidnap my children! Come to mama, kids. Oh, oh, we're not here to kidnap anybody. Then what are you? Field collectors? No. Undercover place women? No. Cable repair women? Why don't you just shut your yap and let her tell you? <sighs> don't mind Valor. She pretends to be hard and cold, but she's really plush and cozy. <sighs> My name is Satin, and uh, Valor and I are your sisters. But I don't got no sisters. When I was little, I lived with the cult of white slave traders. Here's our baby picture. But she does look a little like her. Well, I knew it was too good to be true. Nothing good ever happens to me. Well, these here are my babies. This is my little girl, Amelia. Oh, and, and what's your name, little boy? I know my first name is Stephen. And, and this must be your oldest. No, that's Jakey. He's my fiance. And I thought I was screwed up. Well, why don't we all go inside? We got so much catching up to do. Oh, that sounds like fun. My babies! Someone's getting out my babies! We're right here, Mama. Oh, my babies! You're all right. You're all right. Why don't you go watch yourselves on TV? Hey, where's your furniture? Well, I had to sell it to buy the kids' clothes. I mean, what with my husband disappearing, I mean, abandoning us, and me losing my job teaching at high school and all. You're a teacher. How meaningful that must be for you. Was a teacher. Some of those busybodies stuck their noses in my business, and I got fired. That just makes me so mad. Just because I became engaged to a student. I mean, they got suspicious minds. I don't know where they get off accusing me and Jakey of, of killing anybody. Um, I showed them this note. Dear Cordroy, I am abandoning you and have not been the victim of foul play. 
Feel free to marry one of your students. Signed, my husband. You'd think that would satisfy them. I would have gone crazy if it wouldn't have been for Jakey. <laughs> I got two babies. I needed a man. Every woman needs a man. <laughs> Look, I gotta get dressed for my night job. Why don't you two just make yourselves comfortable? <laughs> This could be it. Rescue workers have indicated that they have located little Nivea. They should be bringing her down any second now. Here she comes. Here she comes. She doesn't look good. It's not her. It's a doll. It's not her. It is a doll. We have just learned that this is not America's little baby Nivea Johnson. The mood of the crowd of onlookers and volunteers, understandably disappointed. How do you feel? Well, I'm, I'm, I'd have to say I'm very disappointed. Understandably. And you, ma'am? Oh, I'm a little disappointed. Understandably. That's enough of that boob tube. Time for bed. I don't want you two kids to ever go anywhere near a recycling bin. You hear me? Yes, Mama. Now go kiss your aunts goodnight. Not me. I'm hard and cold. I don't like nobody and nobody likes me and that's the way I like it. Go over there. Not on the lips! Good night, kids. Good night, kids. Okay. Good night. So what kind of work do you do? Oh, uh... I work in an old age home. Respectable work. Oh. What did you think? Not like I'm a topless dancer or something. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a nail sense of humor. Jakey. Cordroy has told us all about you. Oh, God, I knew we'd be busted. I didn't want to do what she meant. <laughs> Jakey, these are my sisters, Satin and Velour. I showed them the note. And they believed it? Well, of course they did. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> cool. Not one of my sisters. <laughs> They're going to be staying the night. Cool. I will crash in the bed. Oh, nice meeting you, Jakey. But we'll talk more tomorrow. Cool. Well, I better be running along or I'm gonna be late. Oh, Cordray, my chauffeur will drive you down to the old age home. What old age home? Oh, uh, it's just down the road and I need the exercise, so... Uh, you two keep your eye on the kids, and, and I'll be back in the morning, and we'll have ourselves a great big old visit. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Daddy's buried in the backyard. Oh, honey, you want me to play with you? Daddy's buried in the backyard. Gee, I don't know that game. Maybe you could teach it to me tomorrow. Daddy's buried in the backyard. Oh, I get it. You just keep saying the same thing over and over again. Daddy's buried in the backyard. Daddy's buried in the backyard. <laughs> this is kind of fun. <laughs> I really have to have children someday. Oh, 
You had some dust on your chest, and I was just wiping it off. Come on, let's go for a drive. Okay, but let me drive this time. Uh, buckle up. Okay. It's time, Neil. Time for what? Why don't you leave me alone? God, I hate being a multiple personality. <laughs> That's a good one. Multiple personality? You barely have one, buddy boy. That's what my mama used to say. You mean the one who abandoned you to become a topless dancer? Oh, yeah. Let's make love. Now? Here? If not now, when? If not here, where? You're confusing me, Crack. Where? Here. When? Now. Mm. Oh. 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 Mm. Um. If this transplant isn't performed within the next 72 hours, it will be too late. Oh, yes. Oh dear God, I smell parrot. Is that corduroy? Well, no, it's velour. Velour? <laughs> no, no, no. So anyway, corduroy thought that Neil was the topless dancer serial strangler. <laughs> As unassuming and soft-spoken as Neil is, get real, Corduroy. Yeah, get real. Man, you really blew it big time, Mrs. Rich. I, I mean, Corduroy. Well, how's I supposed to know he was Satin's assistant come to see me home safely? I mean, I never laid eyes on him for my life. <laughs> That's right, you never came in here last night. How did you know that Corduroy was my sister? Um, I recognized her from the photo. The photo? I mean, uh, it's not like I'm the topless dancer, serial strangler or something. <laughs> oh, no, it's her sister. It's for you, Satin. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Satin Chow? Yes, this is Satin Chow. Who is this? I know where you live. Oh, dear God! Why are you doing this to me? Satin? It's Varda. How are you, sweetie? Oh, Varda, hi. Oh, I'm fine. Um, I found both my sisters. Oh, you um, did? Oh. Well, Satin, remember that things are not always what they seem, but sometimes they're exactly what they seem not to be. Or, or even more likely, things are what they seem, but what they seem to be is not what they seem. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you, Satin? Don't give up and good luck. All right, that's it. Oh, sure. Goodbye. You may as well ask her, Satin. Oh, I don't think I ought to. Ask me what? If the transplant is in performance within the next 72 hours, it will be too late! I really came looking for you because I need an olfactory nerve transplant. But after everything you've been through, I just couldn't ask you to give me yours. Oh, I'd give it to you in a minute, but I sold my olfactory nerves a couple years ago to buy the satellite dish. I'm so sorry. 
Don't worry, Corduroy. I'm sure that Kaprichotsky will find Mama, and she'll make everything all right. I found your real mother, Satin. Where can we see her? Anytime you want. Oh, come on, everybody. Let's change clothes. We're going to be a real family again. We're going to go see Mommy. 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 We're going to go see Mommy here. Wait a minute. Hey, what is this? We're going to go see Mommy here. Is this it? Oh. Oh, it can't be, Petricelli. Are you sure? Yeah. Come, come on. Let me let me show you where it is. What does it say? I can't read it either, Valor. Not because I can't read like you, but. Because I'm afraid to. Here, let me read the stone for you. Polly Esther Gray, born 1943, dash, died 1959, devoted mother, albeit briefly, of triplets. Oh, Mama. It's us. Your little girls. There's just so much we want to say to you. Say something. You say something. Hi. 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 Here, Mama, this is for you. I don't have much that's worth anything to give you, Mama. All I've got is this old dog-eared, blood-stained copy of Reader's Daily. Lord, where did you get that? I'm sorry, Satin. I can't lie to you anymore. Not here at Mama's grave. I tricked you and used you. I can read. I can read. Oh, dear God. I don't got no use for that insurance policy. Me and Jakey were too scared to cash it in anyway. But Cordoy, isn't a life insurance policy only good if the person is dead? Well... I can't lie to you no more, Satin. Not here at Mama's grave. My husband didn't abandon us. He was too boring to think of something like that. I needed excitement. But he just couldn't see it. I couldn't take his quiet, gentle love anymore. So, I had Jakey kill him in exchange for me giving him the answers to the SATs. But don't you realize that that makes you an accomplice to murder? Oh, dear God! Oh, Mama, what bad seeds sowed these sad, sorry sisters. Oh. Look, it says something else on here. Taken from us by anosmia. Little known but insidious disorder of the olfactory nerves. <gasps> Dr. Meyer didn't say anything about anosmia being fatal, did he? This disease is almost always fatal, and you will die dead from it for sure. Oh, dear God, why me? Oh. You're oh. bleeding! Miss Charles, you're bleeding. Oh, dear God, I am! 
We've got to get her to a hospital right away. Be sure to give them plenty of anesthesia. Don't want to hear any screaming. Here. God, I want you. Uh, before we begin, Satin, you have some visitors outside. We'd like to say goodbye. Goodbye? Oh, did I say goodbye? I meant to say hi. You have some visitors outside. I'd like to say hi. You can let them in, Poops. Oh, this way. Uh, the door over here. Hi, everybody. Hi. Now, you mustn't stay long, and you mustn't say anything to upset her. We want her last moments carefree. We're going to bury you right next to Mama. Bury me? Oh, I'm not gonna die, am I, doctor? You're going to a better world, Satin. The world without... topless dancer. Neil, I'm not gonna go anywhere, am I, doctor? Kid, forget my fee. Seeing you're about to kick the bucket any minute now. Now, Capronini, you are just being a big old worry ward, isn't he, doctor? Me and Steven were wondering if you could give these to Grandma. No, honey, I can't. Can I, doctor? Now, why is everybody being so negative? Come on, I need a little support here. <laughs> Doctor, can I speak to Sister Love? Maybe after the transplant. What do you mean? Oh, Sister Love fell out the window during one of her group love sessions. Ah! Hey! Let's get a move on, people! My crummy anesthesia's wearing off! Yes, we've got to start the transplant now, for God's sakes. There's no time to lose. Women, get ready for every fire out of you. What? I said you'll all have to wait outside. Stop the transplant! Stop the transplant. Doctor, my ear. Yes, I know. But if your ear is bothering you that much, why don't you call my office and make an appointment like everyone else? I'm in the middle of a transplant. Doctor, yeah, I want to be the donor. Oh, Varda, thank you. But you can't. I can't. I can't not. I won't put two of my daughters at risk. What do you mean? Our mommy is dead. Don't be ridiculous. I never said I was your mommy. I don't understand. I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. But it can't be. It can't be. It can't not be. I had my sex change operation the day you girls were born. Then your mother left me for reasons she refused to specify. So after she died, I just didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to raise you by myself. I'm so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, of course I forgive you, Daddy. It wasn't your fault. I'm sure you were a woman trapped in the body of a man. I've seen enough talk shows to know what a living hell that can be. I'm sure you did it because you had no other choice. Actually, it was just kind of a whim, you know? I was out drinking with the guys and it was... Oh, but hey, it's not the kind of thing that's easily changed back, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, well, what's done is done. But Daddy's home now, baby, and everything's gonna be okay. Oh, there's just one more thing. Yes, Daddy? I'm sleeping with your husband. Oh, that's all right. I'm sleeping with your adopted stepson. <gasps> Are you little... Hey, ladies, ladies, please, ah, ladies, ah, gentlemen. All right, let's get this show on the road. Someplace I gotta be. This is the first time I've ever done this, you know. One in a billion shot, but I think we can pull it off. Now. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, it's okay. Spoil that movie star nose of yours. Oh, it's okay. I'm just trimming that mustache for you a little bit while I'm here. Yeah. Oh. 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 
they've been sedated enough. Yeah, she's out. Mm. Well, this little thing is. Oh, let's take it off while we're here. It's going well, isn't it? Still breathing? Still breathing? Oh, this is getting me hot. Oh, come here. <laughs> you can bandage them up now, nurse. There's nothing more for us to do now but wait. Uh, doctor, do you want me to bandage this one, too? Well, why wouldn't I? She's dead. Huh. We just don't know if the transplant was a success. I mean, from the standpoint that the donor died, we do know that it wasn't a total success. My daddy's dead? Yep. Okay, now, as soon as we remove that bandage, we'll run some tests to see whether you regained your sense of smell. Oh. What a punum. Okay, dear. Now, I want you to cover your eyes with your hands for me and keep them there. Oh, good, that easy test. No, that isn't the test, you silly cow! I'm sorry. We just need for you to be quiet, okay? Here we go. And... Do you smell anything? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. I smell the rancid underarm odor of the near dead. Oh, doctor, I'm cured. I'm cured. Yes. 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 Hey, baby. There's some people outside who'd like to say hello to you. Oh, crack. I'm cured. I can smell again. I can smell again. Oh, I uh, better change my uniform then. <laughs> can we come in? Of course, my sisters, the serial killer and the accomplice to murder. I love you both so much. I helped myself to some of your fancy duds. You're welcome, Valor. What's mine is yours. I know. I spoke to an attorney. She almost forgot. I'm an attorney now, too. <sighs> I'm so sorry you killed Daddy. I am, too, Corduroy. But at least we had a Daddy there for a minute, didn't we, sis? You remember us, don't you? Of course I do, Remo. You're my husband that slept with my late father and who I once loved very much but am now sickened by. That's right, darling. Kaprashotsky, the dysfunctional, addictive, self-destructive personality that found my family for me. Saturn, thanks to you. I'm back in a 12-step program. Oh, good for you, Caprolini. When I get out of here, I'm going to take up country western dancing, too. Hey, Mrs. Chow. Oh, Jakey. Oh, please, call me Satin. After all, you're going to be my brother-in-law soon, because you killed my other brother-in-law that I never met, right? Right on. Neil, so unassuming and soft-spoken. Definitely not the topless dancer serial strangler. I don't see the humor in that, Satin. Oh, thank goodness. You know, I never did either. You wouldn't forget me now, would you? Of course not, diner waitress. I remember you. I remember all of you. It's the Chows, my pretend family. I'm still really mad at you two. Can, Can you, you ever, ever forgive, forgive us, us, Satin? No. Oh, it's all the people from the prison sequence. Hello. Hi. That reporter and Mr. Johnson. Oh, and this must be little Nivea. Are you my mommy? No, honey. Your mommy is dead. <laughs> it's Marcy Millman and that intruder who frightened me in the shower. Looks like somebody took somebody shopping. I guess you could say married life agrees with us. <laughs> right, Marcy? I am the luckiest girl in the world to have been found by the only man who could ever love me. Toot your own horn, girlfriend. It's everyone from the Puppy Press preview party. And it's the Puppy Puppy. I 
hope my bad perfume didn't ruin your commercial acting career. Well, I'm very sorry. <laughs> it's Carol, the receptionist. Any messages? Well, I changed my name to Cinnamon and I quit my job. Now I'm working as a topless dancer. <laughs> Hello, Cinnamon. The anesthesiologist. You didn't have a single line. No, ma'am. Now you do. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't said anything in a long time. I've, I've just been standing here and standing here. I would just like a little bit of respect. I'm sorry. No, you're right, doctor. And after all you've done for me. Please, uh, this little bit of attention will hold me for a while. Sorry for the outburst. You may go on. I'm so sorry, I don't remember you. Does this ring a bell? Sutton Joe, I know where you live. Oh, dear God, it's the disturbing caller. Who are you and why were you calling me? Oh, I'm nobody. And it wasn't you in particular for any reason. Just a random act of emotional violence. Oh. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to see all of you. You've all been through so much with me. The anosmia, my family reunion, the death of my daddy, the lady, and all the stuff that's happened in the last few minutes. I want to share with you what I've learned on this journey that you've all so graciously participated in. I've learned that it's not important what senses you have. What's important is that you have the sense to make use of those senses while you have them, because they may not be here tomorrow. And that the bond of family is stronger than any bond the world can impose, because family is the only thing you come into this world with, besides your body and all that stuff. And the love of a family member is unlike any other love there is. Be that family member a serial killer, an accomplice to murder, or even a man who changed into a woman and then died trying to save his little girl's life. And I think you all know who I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. I guess all I'm really trying to say is thank you, everyone. Satin, after the brass got wind of my performance on the case, they asked me to rejoin the force. Oh. And I'm going to start by arresting most of the people in this room. Nobody move! You know what I smell? I haven't got a clue. No. No. What? I smell love. For the first time in my life, damn it! I smell love! I had the privilege to be Morgan Fairchild, and I've had the added privilege to play Satin Chow in the film you've just seen. If you would like more information about anosmia and other disorders of the olfactory system, please contact the Society for Little Known but Insidious Diseases at the number on your screen. And if you or a loved one are an anosmiac with other problems, please contact a Waffle Wop. Anosmiacs with other problems helping other anosmiacs with other problems at the number on your screen. $3.95 a minute, average call, 12 minutes. If you'd like to know more about recycling, please contact the Baby in the Bin Foundation. And finally, if you're interested in topless dancing, transsexualism, murder for hire, self-destructive addictive personality disorders, or dealing with disturbing phone callers, I suggest that you continue to watch high-quality, fine television films like the one you've seen this evening. Good night. The girl is clueless, so she doesn't have a clue. She does all she can do to get by. The girl is clueless, nothing goes on in her head. She knows that she's not dead, but she doesn't know why. The girl is She really cares. She cares. Who that girl is unaware. The girl is clueless if she ever had a clue. It's gone. The girl is clueless if she ever had a clue. The girl is clueless if she ever had a clue. It's gone. She's 
just a girl pretending she's a grown up lady, a woman of the world, but in her mind she's still a baby. She's perfect on the outside, on the inside she's wild. She's a baby lady, grown up, little girl, woman, child. Yeah.